Lissa Productions. In lab seven and eight, we're going to be using an NPN bipolar junction transistor. So this is the uh, symbol for that NPN bipolar junction transistor here. There are three inputs, a base, a collector, and an emitter. And the emitter has a little triangle symbol that indicates that from the base to the emitter, the circuit looks like a diode. So that's the, the transistor. The crucial thing we need to do with this transistor before we can use it is to correctly bias that transistor. Biasing means we apply DC voltage levels to the various legs to put the transistor into a useful state. The state we're after requires us to have the collector voltage bigger than the base voltage. And when that's true, the base voltage minus the emitter voltage is one diode drop. So we approximate that as 0.65 volts, or one diode drop. So collector voltage bigger than the base. Then we have a diode drop here. And then we have the property that the current into the collector and the current into the base are related by this constant beta, or this transistor parameter, which is large. In our case, it's about 130 or so for the transistors that we're going to be using. So a small current into the base leads to a large current into the collector. The current out of the emitter is the sum of those two. So if this is small, then the emitter current is also large. OK, so let's look at how we're going to bias that in the lab here. So we're going to take this transistor, and we're going to use a 12 volt supply. We're going to put that 12 volts into the collector. I'm going to put a resistor of about 470 ohms from the emitter to ground. I'm going to take the output here. And the base, I'm going to bias it by putting a voltage divider between 12 volts and ground, and putting the transistor at the middle of that. So if these are the same resistors, then this voltage is nominally about 6 volts. Collector equals 12 volts. Base is 6 volts. Emitter is then one diode drop below that, so it should be 5.35 volts. In fact, this transistor circuit with the resistor is going to cause this to sag a little bit. It actually looks like a resistive load on that divider, which is, has a resistance of that constant beta times RE. So if beta is about 100, this is about 47 kilo ohms. If those are kilo ohm, this is going to cause this to sag by a few tenths of a volt, and everything will be pulled down a little bit. But otherwise, it should be there. And we can go in and measure those DC levels in the lab. Once we have this set up, this is known as an emitter follower circuit. We can connect an AC signal into here and look at the AC signal going out there. We'll see that the output is simply a copy of the input, but the circuit has a very useful thing, behavior. This impedance, this large impedance of this transistor makes the circuit look like it has a very large impedance, input impedance, which is beta times RE. So 100 times 470, that's 47 kilo ohms. That's good. The other thing, it has a very small output impedance. So whatever the resistance is back here, in this particular case, it's the voltage divider, R parallel R, divided by that beta. So that tends to be a very small number. So whatever this circuit is, it doesn't load down very much, what's back here. And whatever is out here cannot, be load, cannot load down the output of this transistor circuit. So that's good. It matches the impedance and sends a copy of the voltage through. When we go on to lab eight, we're going to change this circuit slightly. We're going to add a second resistor here, a collector resistor. And now the output is going to be minus the ratio of RC to RE times the input. So we're going to get some gain here. And the same input impedance will still hold. We'll see the output impedance in this case is actually given by this collector resistance here. So now let's go down in the lab and have a look at these circuits. So in this lab, we're going to be working with the first active component which we'll have, which is the transistor. I've got one on the board here. Um, one of the new components in this lab is this little bus here that plugs into the board. You can see it here. It's got a bunch of legs in it and a little port here. That plugs in like what was shown, and 
We then have a power brick here with a connector that plugs into that. And when this is plugged in and turned on, this little thing puts voltages on the buses here. It puts minus 12 on the top bus, plus 12 ground and 5 volts. So that's useful because a lot of what we're going to be doing requires plus 12, minus 12, or 5 volts. The other thing, I've got the transistor in the circuit here. Let me pull it out so we can see it. I, I'll show you in a second that I put it in just sort of to make the legs easy to access. The other thing I've done is after I've carefully identified which leg is the emitter, I have slipped a little piece of basically wire coating that I've stripped off of a wire over there on the emitter so that I know which one is the emitter. One other thing we have is our digital voltmeter here has a little thing on the side here for measuring transistors to tell us if they're any good. This is an NPN transistor, so we have to identify the NPN side. Put in base, emitter, and collector, and I can easily see the emitter because it's white. So I plug it in here, and I put it in, plug it in, set it on HFE, and it's often a little fiddly, but if I put it down, it will tell me it'll measure this transistor. Typically, you're going to get a number that's about 100, which is what I'm getting here on this transistor. So that tells me it's OK. If you get something smaller than that, the first thing is to try a second meter, because it might not be working. And then it may actually be that there's a problem with the transistor, so you'll want to get another one. Transistor is plugged into the circuit here. I've got this set up. So I've set it so I can very easily identify where everything is here. Get it in there. and. What we're going to be measuring in this circuit, we have, um, there'll be some input initially to DC voltage, then we'll put an AC voltage in. And we're going to be measuring the input and output impedance of this transistor circuit and seeing what the output voltage is. So basically, we're measuring the gain, which is how the output voltage varies as a function of input voltage, the input impedance, what sort of resistance the transistor circuit presents to whatever is driving it, and the output impedance, whatever something that is being driven by the circuit will see. So let's go in and look more carefully at this circuit. OK, and so here we look in. We've got the basic transistor circuit set up here. Two resistors here form a voltage divider between plus 12 and ground. Identical resistors, so something like 6 volts in the middle. That goes into the base of the transistor. Can't really see it here, but I've lit the leg of my resistor here, the emitter, is covered in plastic. I've been very careful to place the transistor in this circuit, so it's very easy to get to the legs. It's very easy to put it in in an awkward way where the legs are crossing and you short something out. Probably the most important thing you want to do is put the transistor in in a convenient way so you can get to the ports on either side of it. It's obvious where the emitter is. It's obvious where the base and collector is. Here's the 12 volt. That's dropping to the collector. This line goes into the base. Emitter's coming out here. There's the emitter resistor to ground. So that's the output of my circuit. I put an input in. It's going to come in between these two resistors here. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that things are biased correctly. I have 12 volts coming in, and what's convenient is to use my pokey probes just to measure that. So I can go over, and we'll just start by measuring from the, across the total, entire voltage divider here. I get in there, and we can see it's okay, 11.84 volts. That's the voltage there. Let me disconnect the transistor right now to just see what the voltage at the middle of the voltage divider is. 5.88. Okay, so that's the voltage divider with nothing hooked on it. I'm now going to put it into the base, and we're going to see that the voltage is going to drop a little bit. We can actually calculate this drop, and it should be consistent with what we calculate. It's now 5.79, so it's dropped a little bit. That's the voltage at the base. If I go over here and measure the voltage at the base, there's my 5.79. Voltage at the collector, 11.83. Emitter should be one diode drop below the base. Go here, there's the emitter. 5.13. So I have demonstrated that this transistor is properly DC biased. So now I can go in and make a measurement. That little check will save you a tremendous amount of time. So you want to make sure that you do that. We now continue. We can put a, an input signal in here. We can look at the output here with the scope. And we can go and measure the input signal, the output signal. We can vary resistors to measure the input frequency response of that. We can measure the input impedance and the output incidence of this emitter follower circuit. So that's what we'll be doing here. Most important thing, make it easy to get to the transistor legs and make it obvious which one is the emitter. That will save you a lot of time, and you probably won't have a component on the wall of shame. And we spent some time carefully making sure that the circuit was biased correctly. 
So in lab seven, we looked at the emitter follower circuit, which is basically a circuit that lets a voltage pass through, but presents a very high input impedance to whatever is being driven and a very low output impedance to, the, to whatever we're driving with the circuit. And that's a very nice feature. So basically it's an impedance matcher here. It lets us chain together various chains of things. In, in lab eight, we've modified the emitter follower circuit slightly to turn it into an inverting amplifier circuit. So instead of simply passing the signal through, we see that we get a, an output signal which is 10 times bigger than the input signal. We also pay a small penalty. While the input impedance is still very large on this circuit, we see that the output impedance is controlled by a resistor that we have to set to a fairly, fairly large value, about 4.5 kilo ohms in our case. So that may not be the most desirable output impedance, but we are able to build a circuit, and we have, that gives us a non-unity gain in, in amplification here. So these two circuits are with the transistors, and we'll go ahead and build those.